I think it comes down to the cultural relevance of sports and it just being the one thing that so many people care about and are keyed into despite being apathetic about so many other things. For companies that are trying to reach mass audiences, it just makes sense. Sports are just such a core pillar to people's everyday lives and it's not just about what happens on the field, there's an entire culture around it that you can tap into. Hi everyone, it's Julie Verhage Greenberg here with your Tux Time podcast from FinTech Today, where we talk about all things FinTech. And in this episode, I am joined by Katy Perry, the VP of Marketing at Public, who's actually way cooler than the other Katy Perry that you thought about when I initially said that name. Um, Katie, I'm so excited to dive into marketing with you today after there's been a ton of marketing in fintech happening in the past year or so. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Julie. I don't know if I'm cooler than Katy Perry. I'm definitely not married to Orlando Bloom, so I don't have that going, but um, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, yeah, there's a lot happening, and I'm really, really excited to talk about sports with you. I think personally, I'm just a huge sports fan, but uh, follower of sports culture, and there's a lot of really cool things happening at the intersection of sports and business. So I did a piece recently that you guys can find on fintechtoday.co, our website, but uh, there's been a lot of companies partnering with not only different teams to get like logos on their jerseys or things like that, but there's also been partnerships formed between companies and athletes themselves. And when I was going back and doing research, for this piece. The most like far back one I could find it was the Charlotte Hornets doing a partnership with Lending Tree back in November of 2017. And then like going through, you can see like one a year, two a year, and then all of a sudden in 2019, 2020, you started seeing a bunch more. The biggest one that I initially remember hearing about when I was covering FinTech was SoFi obviously doing uh, the LA Stadium buyout for around $400 million back in September of 2019. Um, So now, obviously, if you're watching the NFL, you've probably seen a few games at SoFi Stadium out in LA. But Katie, you obviously live and breathe marketing. Is it right that this has only picked up in the past like six to 12 months? Or am I missing something and this was actually like always a big thing? It's definitely accelerating in the context of fintech. And I think it has to do with fintechs going mainstream and sports being a key pillar in mainstream culture. Whenever I talk to somebody outside of the marketing space and I try to kind of break down what it is, it's really just about getting people to care about your brand and your product and in a way that's relevant in their lives. And so you're seeing a lot of fintechs as they're expanding who their audiences are and as these companies become more mainstream, anchoring onto sports as a way to infiltrate those mainstream cultural conversations. Um, And I I think that's kind of the, the main reason for the acceleration that you referenced. Looking at this then from a VP of marketing point of view, Uh, I don't know that you guys have done any partnerships with sports teams or athletes yet, but if you were to do so, like, how would you judge the success of that? Is it simply brand awareness where you look at, like, how often people are talking about you? Um, Is it signups? Like, each time there's a game, are you looking for a surge in people signing up for public.com? What what are you going to be checking out to be like, okay, like, this actually is a good marketing channel for us? I think any marketer dreams of the day where they have budget to buy an entire stadium. <laughs> We're not quite there yet. We have done some we have done some moves in sports. Um, and that is due to just this natural intersection of sports and business. I think athletes are kind of inherently multi-hyphenates. They're athletes, they're business people, they're activists. And so for us, we're a really kind of mission-led company. And I think a lot of athletes are really um, creating positive, models for for their fans and especially young people to follow when it comes to their investments and their business moves, learning about equity. And it's incredible to see kind of the momentum there from people like Naomi Osaka to Serena Williams. There's just endless places where you're seeing athletes expand beyond being just an athlete. Um, A couple of things that we've done, uh, again, we're not at the stage where we can, you know, buy the the logo on the Knicks or buy a whole stadium, but there's still ways to to kind of anchor to sports. And and we kind of do it in a way of 
aligning with organizations and personalities that really align with our with our business and our mission and really kind of share our passion for for expanding access to the public markets. One um, partnership we actually did over the summer was with the Premier Lacrosse League. Uh, at a glance, you might say, oh, obviously an investing app is going to partner with the Lax Bros, right? But what's really <laughs> interesting about the PLL is they are really working hard to kind of reverse the stereotypes around their sport. They do a lot of education around the indigenous origins of lacrosse. Um, they're building a real community around the sport, which community is huge in terms of how can you create a network effect in your partnerships. And what's really cool about them um, and their founder, Paul Rabel, has actually been on the app for a while. He's one of our most popular creators there. Um, they actually give their athletes equity in the PLL. And it's this uh, the idea of investing in ownership is built in. Um, so that was a really awesome partnership we did. We were the exclusive investing app with them. Um, part of that was a lot of their athletes got, you know, on the platform, started participating. And then there was the usual kind of aspects like the signage, the commercial call out. So it's always a mix of levers you're pulling. For us, we were really looking for, yes, we wanted the awareness and the alignment and sort of the, the narrative development around changing the culture of investing. But also we had activations that were designed to to spur growth because where we're at right now, you know, we don't we can't just spend millions and millions of dollars and not be able to track that back to material growth. Um, so that's one example. On on the athlete level, we we work with a lot of athletes as ambassadors of public. The last one we just announced was Bobby Wagner. He's on the Seahawks, incredible, incredible player, but has an incredible story as well. Um, since his early days on the Seahawks, he actually took an internship at Microsoft as an NFL player. He wanted to, to oh. learn the ins and outs of the business. He founded a venture capital firm in Seattle. Uh, he also negotiated his own contract. So just incredible alignment with what we're doing. And we're doing a long-term program with him designed to get some of his fans um, active in investing and learning sort of about the idea of ownership and equity. Uh, so, so a couple things we're doing there, and then I'll pause. But we're also doing some work on the on the college athlete front, which is an, a, another really interesting development, not just for fintech, but for all brands. Yeah, especially as we start to see younger and younger people get interested in the stock market now that it's as easy as having an app on your phone versus having to like open a brokerage account online and send over thousands of dollars and. And all of that stuff. There's so many questions I have based on your uh, answer, though. I guess we'll start off with, is simply the reason we're seeing a surge in fintech companies partnering with uh, sporting teams, the fact that they are getting to this larger scale where they have the budgets where they can do this kind of stuff? Or are there some other dynamics at play where it, it makes more sense today than it did two years ago to have your logo on a Knicks jersey or the Heat jersey? I think it comes down to the cultural relevance of sports and it just being the one thing that so many key people care about and are keyed into despite being apathetic about so many other things. And so finding ways to, to integrate with these teams for, for companies that are trying to reach mass audiences, it just makes sense. Um, and, and you're seeing a lot of creativity here too. One of my favorite recent case studies is Ryan Reynolds buying a Welsh soccer team. Um, that's probably <laughs> the equivalent of, a, a sub sub farm team in the MLB. And literally it's like a meme stock of a sports team because they're willing all of this attention and influx of capital. I think TikTok is their Jersey sponsor. No one cared about this team a couple years ago. Um, but it's really interesting, and he's using that to promote his aviation gin brand as well, which is on the other patch. So I, I love the creativity that's happening here outside of just, you know, the logo on the jersey outside of the stadium. You see other people getting in in scrappy ways because I think, again, you see sports are just such a core pillar to people's everyday lives. And it's not just about what happens on the field. There's an entire culture around it that you can tap into. Another question I have off of this then is there's several different ways you can advertise in the sports area, right? And one that I've seen for a much longer period of time with fintech companies is just buying commercials during sporting events. 
talk to me a little bit about the thought process of just buying a commercial, like Credit Karma did a bunch during the Olympics. Why, why would someone like them choose to do that versus getting Simone Biles to be like a Credit Karma uh, advocate? For some of these bigger brands, you're seeing kind of both levers um, there. So what what's interesting to me is is more so at this stage of our company, at least, is at the athlete level. Um, you know, historically in pro sports, athletes haven't had a lot of leeway in terms of flexing their own personal brands and personalities. And that has changed a lot. Some leagues are more flexible than others. The NBA is notorious for allowing, uh, notorious is probably not not the right word, um, famous <laughs> for, for allowing their athletes to have personalities. And, you know, part of that is, you know, they're, they're not in masks. There's fewer people on the court. But you the, the human side of athletes is really interesting when you think about like what authentic marketing looks like. There are very few professions and even like celebrity type of professions where you can see somebody's weaknesses, you can see their failures, you see their triumphs. And it's, it's really, really interesting um, for brands that are trying to align with people that can create that emotional connection. Now, of course, Those mass TV commercials, those all have impact. Obviously, there's reasons people do those. Um, But I think for bigger companies, you're seeing a mix of of different tactics there. Yeah, and one that I can think of right away, uh, and this is, again, because I watched football over the weekend, is that FTX has this Tom Brady commercial where he's like talking to Giselle, be like, guys, I'm getting into crypto. And FTX is also, I mentioned in the piece, um, doing a sponsorship with the Miami Heat. So it, again, it's it's playing both sides of that coin. Uh, I, I'd be interested to know which... I, you can't... Maybe you can, correct me if I'm wrong, actually measure which one is more successful than the other. I think the goal of both of them is probably more like brand awareness, getting your name out there. And a company like FTX in the crypto space has a lot of money that they can spend on these types of things right now. Yeah, talk about a budget I would love to have. <laughs> Um, like, I don't even know that must be a full-time job just figuring out how to spend that money for, for someone, but yeah, it's the, the measurement's really tough on these awareness things, especially if it's like, uh, an extended flight, like a Jersey logo, you can't say, oh, this, this ad ran, or we had this post go up and track it back. Um, there's definitely a lot of like analytics partners and, and ways of kind of backing into it, but it's always a bit of a leap of faith on those things. And that's why, you know, smaller companies, it's not just about not having the budget. It's that, you know, you don't necessarily have the luxury to only kind of mark those impressions or awareness metrics. You really want to continue to to drive against the business goals in a way that's measurable, uh, especially as you're just getting started. So you, you can optimize and figure out kind of what the next moves are. If someone uh, is going to do a sponsorship, are they approaching the teams? Are the teams or stadiums approaching them and sending out a call like, hey, our sponsorship runs out in X year. Whoever is interested, give us your best offers. Like, how exactly does that work? They're definitely approaching us, um, The <laughs> especially after we did the Premier Lacrosse League. The amount of inbounds we received, like, Any logo, any team, any league, any athlete, you name it. So these sports organizations and the people working there are very savvy. They know kind of that fintechs have a growing interest. They know, you know, we're going after mainstream audiences and they know sports are an effective way to do that. Um, we we never need to reach out to anyone on this stuff. It's it's funny, like the first few I got really excited, like uh, you know, Publix probably the most well-known company I've worked at. I was like, ooh, the Knicks want us to be on the logo. Like, I felt special for a second. And then I was like, wait a minute. Um, so it's, they're really savvy and, and they know what they're doing. And they're definitely being very aggressive in the outreach and the pitching of this. Has any of that changed post-COVID? Because I know for a long time, just given that, uh, obviously, when the pandemic was going on, a lot of sports had to be canceled. And advertisers had to take those dollars elsewhere it is the budget that or the price that they're asking I guess I should phrase it as more or less than it was before or uh, like how is that sort of playing out just given that there essentially was very little sports advertising prior to this season for about a year yeah, I don't have an exact point of reference because before the pandemic, we were in a much different stage and they definitely weren't hitting us up yet. But I will say anecdotally from what I've seen, sports are back. 
Um, this is one of those things I feel like the pandemic either changed things forever in one direction or made people just run towards things they missed. And I think you're seeing that in sports. I think sports, live events, people miss these experiences and they snapped right back. Um, obviously, you know, different leagues had different circumstances with this. But if I had to guess, I, I would assume you're not seeing like bargain bin prices going out there for sporting events based on just how much people are, are going back to past behaviors around sports. It feels like most of this is also obviously consumer facing stuff. You wouldn't be likely to see a BDB company advertising as much as I mean, the ones that I think of that are out there right now are crypto companies, payments companies, challenger banks and brokerage apps, essentially, like I I don't see any like having Brex advertise at a sporting event doesn't make as much sense, even though Brex has a good advertising budget as well. I think like that there's more of a reason why you don't see them going and, you know, buying a stadium or having their logo on a next jersey. Yeah, I think at a high level, the exercise is, as a marketer is understanding who your target customer is and then understanding who they are, where they spend time and what they care about. So I'm certainly there's some, you know, Brex customers that enjoy sports, but the the lion's share, the vast majority of people in that stadium are watching on TV or following on, you know, a streaming platform, you know, that they're not the core audience. But again, like these, you know, neobanks, brokerage apps like ours, like mainstream, the mainstreamification of these things means you want to be where your potential customers are. And people love sports. People of all ages love sports. And there's de- definitely nuances in the leagues in terms of the types of people that are are fans and and one interesting um, graphic that I always reference is the average age of different leagues and how much that Hmm. varies. The NBA fan is on average much younger than the NFL fan, the MLB fan, very aging. Um, And so (laughs) you kind of look at those things and it's all about meeting the people you're trying to reach where they're already spending time in a way that you stand out is not disruptive to the experience and will hopefully convert to your business goals. Yeah. And one other area I want to kind of use to move this forward. And as we close out the podcast is that there was one partnership that we saw recently, which was aspiration with the LA Clippers. And they did, I forget exactly what the terms of it were, but there was like a sustainability pledge that went along with it. Is that something that we're likely to see more companies add into the agreements that they make? I think so. Actually, one team that's doing an incredible job of this is Angel City FC, which is the new um, women's soccer team out of LA. I think Natalie Portman's an owner, Alexis Ohania, and some other people. They've actually built into their strategic partnerships a percentage where they're giving back towards whatever the mission of that company is. So if we were to do something with them and spend you know, X amount of dollars, they would commit to a certain percentage of that going to financial literacy or economic empowerment or or whatever it is. I think that model is brilliant. It allows mission-led brands to um, have a partnership with a team that aligns with them. In terms of Angel City, I think one of the most brilliant things they're doing is building a true community, and that's how you do it through these sort of programs that aren't just let's slap a logo up there, but like having partners that are pushing pushing values forward that their their viewers and their fans care about. So they're definitely one to watch. And I think just in general, um, what I hope to see, and I, I think we're seeing more of is more sort of um, ad dollars going into women's athletes and women's sports. Um, obviously, in the past, that's not where most of the budgets have been going. It's tied to viewership and the types of support that these leagues and athletes get. But you are seeing a lot of um, women athletes and leagues really leading the way here. And I think that's a great thing, um, especially for companies that are going after, you know, audiences that they want more diverse audiences. That's where you find them. Um, And there's a lot, a lot of momentum around women's sports right now. You're following the WNBA playoffs, tons of excitement. Um, We did a partnership with Just Women's Sports recently. They're an incredible platform that focuses on uh, women's sports news. So I would advise all marketers in fintech to not overlook those opportunities. There's a lot of really interesting things happening there. Well, that's a great way to close things off. If you guys want to learn more about Public, go to public.com. They also have an awesome app that you can download. 
Um, and if you want to hear more uh, about fintech in general, go to fintechtoday.co. That is our website. Otherwise, Katie will have to have you back on again when you guys are on the Knicks jerseys or some other team's jerseys. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. Also, just wanted to call out, we're hiring. So public.com slash careers if anyone wants to take a look and join our team to keep things on theme. Um, but thanks so much. I love talking about this stuff and I appreciate you having me on. Thank you guys. Yep, highly endorse working at public. They're a fun bunch. We'll see you again next time. Bye.